Well, leaving uh, our accommodations here in Beckley, West Virginia. They promised to be a short day. Only about 160 miles to Waynesboro, Virginia. Uh, and tomorrow home. Uh, tomorrow's a 244 mile day. And why not cut the difference? Uh, make it halfway. Well, there, there really isn't much in the halfway point. I mean, Waynesboro is a more scenic stop. It's a, it's a good point. And I know that route. Uh, I've been down that route a thousand times from Waynesboro home. I could do a blindfold. So. <clears throat> now, this morning's trick is to find the interstate. There we go. Junction 64. I will tell you, I'm a little tired. I think uh, the trip is uh, starting to uh, wind its way down, and I am feeling it. West, east. Ah, it will feel good to get home. Yeah. Uh, as much as I've loved the trip, and no doubt about it, it's been a uh, the real effect of the trip. I probably will have to digest and chew on for weeks to come to get the full flavor of it. But it's been a good trip. It's been challenging. The challenges we thought we would have, we didn't have. Challenges we didn't think were your problem became the challenges. Or, oh, also, a note, <clears throat> yesterday going through Charleston, West Virginia, the interstate, besides having a toll, it's the only place I've ever paid a toll in an interstate, <clears throat> uh, was incredibly curvy, steep curves. Um, even the Rocky Mountains, the passes we went through, <clears throat> even Wolf Creek Pass, besides the ice, it was not that curvy. West Virginia is much more uh, challenging of a road system. But <clears throat> West Virginia's got a lot more hills. They're just not as tall. Ah, I can't believe that the remnants of this cold is still kicking my butt. Still gonna take cough syrup at nighttime to go to bed. But that's what happens when you get uh, high altitude sickness and uh, hypothermia at the same time. my face Then I just had to look up above and thank somebody for this place because he must have been thinking about me where he planted that very first dog tree it's where I want to be just living in the sweet Virginia breeze You know, when you're stricken by uh, a case of terminal wanderlust, the things that go through your mind is, uh, well, weird. Anyway, up in the he up ahead is the uh, Blue Ridge Mountains, and uh, running along the most distant ridge line is the Appalachian Trail. Um, years ago, I was backpacking that section of trail, and we overnighted on a clearing right on the ridge line, and if I rolled in one direction, I could see the uh, the valley, the open area to the east, which is the Piedmont Plateau. If I rolled over my sleeping bag, I could see the Shenandoah Valley and the mountains to the west, to include Interstate 64 that I'm on right now. And as the sun was setting, I was noticing headlights and taillights from the traffic going off into the distance, even from way up there on that ridge line. And I just had this feeling about, I wonder where they're going. And where are they coming from? And to be on this road, looking at that mountain, and kind of want to talk to myself of the past, and go, it's me, returning from an incredible odyssey. And uh, it sort of brings the circle all the way around. See, I told you I think about weird things. 
Well, turning off the interstate uh, for my overnight accommodations for the last time for the trip. Oh, I think tomorrow I'm going to get an early start and leave as early as I can. Uh, the Virginia heat and humidity is uh, here. It's uh, 95, and we're in the mountains, so when I get down lower, it's probably going to be 97. So uh, the sooner I can get home before the afternoon heat hits, the better. But we're staying at night is the best western which is right there and which is uh, really close to a uh, I'm hoping a restaurant we can go get a light dinner and a cold drink while checking into the hotel I asked the clerk if they could recommend a nice restaurant to get a good meal they pointed out this nice barbecue restaurant just across the parking lot so I stopped in and filled up on ribs and whiskey and after leaving I noticed this rainbow Yes, I've seen rainbows before. The end of the rainbow is actually pointing to my home in Virginia Beach. It's probably just a coincidence. Hey guys, good morning. It's uh, day 28 of the trip. With any luck, by early afternoon we'll be home and uh, we will be winding up the Asphalt Odyssey. Uh, it's going to be a bittersweet return. I'm looking forward to getting home. And uh, getting back into my routine, on the other hand, I'm going to miss the road. It's been a hoot. I, <clears throat> it will take me weeks, if not longer, to fully digest what I've seen, what I've accomplished. Uh, I'm very happy about that. And I, I tell you that once I get rested and <clears throat> laundry done, I'll probably be wanting to plan another trip. It's been spectacular it, words fail me to describe uh, the beauty I've seen it promises to be a bit of a warm day in the low 90s so I'm trying to get out and get early get get on the road early and uh, beat the afternoon heat and Miriam's already promised made me promise to take her out to dinner when I get home I said yeah let me get a shower first and we'll go out to our favorite watering holes and have a celebratory meal 28 days and the reason it was 28 days and not 30 I had two rest days that I chose not to use I was saving those for adverse weather really didn't have that much adverse weather on the trip uh, had uh, a little bit of rain in Arkansas heading out uh, maybe a cloud burst uh, the weather incident in the panhandle of Texas <clears throat> in retrospect I probably could have stayed in a hotel an extra day there but Miriam's plane was arriving in Albuquerque so we could do that and then the uh, <clears throat> The ice storm at Wolf Creek Pass, which, like most adverse situations, gives you some incredible bragging rights. So, even though it cost us uh, a lot of anxiety and gave us both, uh, net, worsened our head colds, uh, the story is worth it. So, anyway, we'll catch you on the road as we head down for the last stretch, the, the home stretch, as it were. Leaving out. Well, we're leaving out. Uh our last accommodations for the trip here in Waynesboro, Virginia. <clears throat> you know, I felt like I have eaten an awful lot on this trip, but I, apparently I've lost weight. Um, my uh, blue jeans are a little bit loose, more loose than they were when I started. Nice, comfortable. Uh, Saturday morning. Temperature is about 70. Uh, can't quite read it. BRP makes the uh, digital readout really, really small. 73. Probably a chance of afternoon thunderstorms uh, as long as we don't get deluged. That's okay. This morning's trip planning was really easy, straightforward. I didn't have to uh, worry about hotels, route planning, uh, plugging in destinations into the GPS. Once uh, the GPS warmed up, I simply pushed the home button. Not that I need the GPS to get home from here. I know this route. I've been down this route literally a thousand times. But it's nice to know when, uh, excuse me, <clears throat> when the turns are coming up. Kind of give you a heads up.
last morning on the road. Bittersweet. I know I've said that, but it is. It's a conflict of emotions. Happy to be going home. Sad the trip is over. Take me out to the country. I feel mighty good out there. When I get back to the city of the monuments, doesn't matter where I hang my hat. It's home to me. The Blue Ridge Mountains tend to set me free. It's where I want to be, just living in the sweet Virginia breeze. Sweet Virginia breeze Wakes me up in the morning Rocks me to sleep at night You got a red bird singing on your windowsill You know everything will be alright Just living in the sweet Virginia breeze Well, we just crossed into the 30 miles from home mark. GPS said we'll be home in uh, uh, about 35 minutes. Looking forward to it. Uh, Miriam may or may not be home. She had an, a, uh, an appointment this morning after she went to the farmer's market. That Route 66 side of my garage means so much more now. Oh. I can get off this thing. Ah. Well guys, that takes care of that. The spider is now completely unloaded. You know, once I got it inside the garage, I realized how absolutely dirty it is. It looks like that uh, Hollywood uh, special effects department has been at this with uh, some grime and dirt spray on effect because the spider's really dirty. So I'm looking forward to getting that cleaned up, but that's going to be a couple of days from now. Yeah. Anyway, it's really hard to get my mind around what I've just finished. It feels strange to be home uh, here in my own house again after 28 days of being on the road. I'm reminded what Napoleon Hill said in his book, titled Think and Grow Rich. Whatever the mind can conceive and believe, it can achieve. And I'm here to tell you, if you, you know, I don't want to preach, but if you establish a goal and you work towards the goal and you follow the simple pattern or the, the simple formula for developing your goal, you will achieve your goal. This was uh, 
This is a big one. Uh, to be gone for a month is, uh, is significant. It's a significant amount of time. It's a significant amount of preparation uh, and a significant amount of financial uh, expense to, to do something like this. But uh, we pulled it off. I'm glad we did. I'm really surprised at the amount of an emotional feeling that I have once that I, I got back. I got off the spider and went into the house, and I was really rather overwhelmed with emotion. I expected that I would have an emotional response when I left. I was uh, excited and anxious, but I really didn't have any real strong emotions. But returning home today was very emotional. Uh, I guess the sense of profound uh, sense of accomplishment uh, and euphoria that, that I did this and I, I got back safely. Uh, I'm very happy about that. And it will also reinforce the drive to go out and do more large adventures. You know, that's for another day though. It's probably going to take weeks, if not months, to fully digest all the details of the trip. There's going to be several spinoff videos. I know that I'm going to do a video about uh, things that I would change, do differently during the trip, and some details on the trip. We've got some comments about, gee, how much did this trip actually cost? We're going to kind of break down the finances a little bit to give you an idea of the type of budget we had for this trip. And it looks like we did bring it in on budget, which is surprising. So it looks like Asphalt Odyssey 2019 is done. And it's in the history books. But a lot of memories have been generated. And I'd like to wind up today's video with some highlights of the Asphalt Odyssey. So guys, that's going to be about it for today's video. I appreciate you watching and tagging along on my little odyssey around the United States. And Lord knows what's in the, the mix for next year. I know we've got some other shorter trips lined up for this year. I'm going to, you'll be there with us. So again, thanks for watching. Y'all take care.
Walt Whitman, The Open Road. Afoot and lighthearted, I take to the open road. Healthy, free, the world before me. The long brown path before me, leading me wherever I choose. Henceforth, I ask not for good fortune. I myself am good fortune. Henceforth, I whimper no more, postpone no more, need nothing. Done with indoor complaints, libraries, quarrelsome criticisms, strong and content, I travel the open road. <laughs>